Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you what large scale software engineering looks like and how different it actually is from building your own passion project on the side. In software companies like the one I work at, there are often dozens if not hundreds of developers collaborating on the same project simultaneously. So how do we manage these large scale projects, coordinate so many people and still deliver a high quality product that could be used by thousands or millions of users? Well, it all starts with a solid plan. And this is where Scrum comes in. So what is Scrum? In very simple words, Scrum helps teams work efficiently by breaking down complex projects into smaller, manageable tasks. It works in iterations called sprints, which for us are usually two weeks long. Before each sprint begins, we have a planning meeting with the developer and the product owner, which can take up most of the day. In this meeting, we plan out all the tasks for the upcoming sprint, and our product owner, who is responsible for defining the project goals, presents a list of features and improvements which are written as user stories. These stories are basically tickets in Jira or any other issue tracking software that describe what exactly needs to be done from the user's perspective. Each user story is assigned a number of story points to estimate how much effort it will take to complete and for us one story point equals about 4 hours of work. During the planning we check how much time each developer has available in the upcoming sprint, add up the total story points and discuss whether the estimates make sense. This is also when we prioritize tasks, ensuring the most important features get done first. After the planning is over, we define the goals of the sprint and then the sprint is officially started and has its deadline two weeks later. And now, the actual development work begins. The development phase usually starts a day after the sprint planning, because as I said before, the planning usually takes up an entire day, if not more. So my day starts with me checking out the sprint Kanban board, which allows all the developers and the product owner to have an accurate overview of the work progress. This is very important to see whether we are still on track or if we are behind schedule. I then pick a story I want to work on, if it's not already taken by someone else, and go through the detailed description again to make sure I fully understand the desired feature. This is very important because misunderstandings can cost quite a lot of time sometimes. As I mentioned earlier, all stories have defined story points which represent an estimated duration, but that's just the high level view. Now it's my job to break this story down even further into smaller, more manageable subtasks. For example, if I would build a user registration feature, I'd break it down into 5 subtasks. Create UI with form fields, add new users table to the data model, implement user creation endpoint and a merge request subtask. This is also a subtask I create even though I'm not going to work on it because the time spent on the review is also part of the story scope. And this detailed breakdown of each feature serves two important purposes. First, it helps me to structure my work and track my progress. And second, if I'm sick or on vacation, it allows another developer to hop in at any time and know exactly where to continue. I also put my own time estimates on each subtask and if everything was planned well, the sum of my subtask estimates should match the working hours defined by the story points. And now there's only one thing left stopping me from starting to code. The daily stand-up meeting. They are planned every day, usually in the morning, while the sprint is active and all the developers basically have to answer three questions. What did you do yesterday? What are you gonna do today? And did you face any problems or do you need any help? They are actually super important for a successful sprint because it helps the entire team to see the process and identify sprint goal threats as soon as possible, which gives us the option to do something about it. The first thing I have to do is create a feature branch from our dev branch. We have a bunch of different branches, but I'll get to that later. It's really important that every developer works in his own feature branch so we can make sure not to interfere with anyone else's code. I then grab one of my subtasks and a coffee and start working on it. The development of a feature can take between a few hours or a couple of days and really depends on the story. But it's my favorite part because for me it's very satisfying to watch these pieces you're building slowly merging into a final result. It's also important to keep the subtasks up to date and regularly update the remaining times to make the progress visible to the others. And one thing that you should always do is to push your new code at least once a day to make sure you don't lose anything of the new code. And once the feature is complete, everything works and I've added new tests that cover my code, it's time to create a merge request or a pull request. But before someone else is going to look at my code, I should make sure that our pipeline passed successfully. After each push to the repository, an automated process is triggered that builds the application, runs code quality checks and runs the entire test suite, and only if all checks pass, it's time to request a merge review from one of my team members. All the team members do code reviews. It's important that everybody takes some time to review merge requests, because the story only counts as done if it's reviewed and merged. In the reviewing process, we'll firstly go through the story to understand the feature that was implemented. 
Then we test the feature and look at the new code. And if we find something that's bad or needs improvement, we either just do it ourselves if it's a quick fix or leave a comment which describes what exactly needs improvement. If there are problems, we assign the merge request back to the creator and let them resolve all the threads. Sometimes there's a second check, but usually everything can be resolved after the first review. And if this is the case, it's time to merge it into the dev branch. The merge to the dev branch also triggers an automated pipeline, which executes the same checks one more time. And if they all pass, it triggers an automated deployment on our dev environment. In larger companies, there are usually three environments for an application. Dev, which is the least important, used by the development team, product owner and QA engineers to see and test the latest features. QA or sometimes staging, which is the first environment the customer can access and test the software. And also the testing data on QA should always be very close to what production data looks like to make it as realistic as possible. And of course production, which is the most important environment because it's used by actual users creating and working with real data. But before any of my new code touches an environment higher than dev, it goes through an extensive testing by our QA team. Unlike developers who might have tunnel vision from working so closely with the code, our test managers and QA engineers approach the software from a completely different angle and that is what makes the QA team so valuable. Most of them don't have a development background and they use the software just like actual customers would. Clicking through interfaces, trying different combinations and sometimes doing things we developers would never think of. As a developer you know exactly what to do and what not to do, but a real user might have completely different ideas about how to use your software. And if they find a bug or something that doesn't make sense from a user's perspective, they create a bug ticket in which they describe the problem and assign it back to a developer who then proceeds to fix these things. And this process is repeated until no more issues are found. The QA team is usually involved right from the start and participates in sprint planning meetings to understand upcoming features and prepare their test scenarios accordingly. And if QA gives their final approval, we can continue with the deployment process. When all new features are completed, functional and successfully tested, it is time to prepare a release candidate that will be rolled out in our QA system. The process is actually super simple. We just merge the latest dev branch into our QA branch. This also triggers an automated pipeline. You slowly get how it works, but this pipeline doesn't trigger an automated deployment. If everything passes, one of the devs prepares the release notes for the latest feature and also adds a tag to the new release. Then we manually trigger the deployment on the QA server and inform our QA team that the deployment is completed. They go over the changes one more time and check that nothing is broken. This step is super important because when deploying to a large system that already has a lot of data in it, it's super easy to break stuff, especially when your changes contain database migrations, which is almost always the case. And the worst thing that could happen is if we tell the customer that hey, your new release is ready and he goes on the QA system and finds a broken environment. It's just not professional. After that, the customer can take his time to test all the new features and give us feedback. And if he's happy with everything, we can repeat the process one last time for the prod environment. We merge the QA branch into the prod branch and repeat the deployment process. And at this point, we must be sure that everything works perfectly. Because on prod, there is no more room for tests and errors. If we deploy on prod, it's done. It has to work. This is always an intense moment for me because even if you're sure that everything works because you and the QA team have tested it so many times, once you're hitting that deploy button and start altering production data, there is no going back. Of course we have backups etc, but rolling a big feature deployment back and restoring the data from the previous backup is really no fun. And also if the backup is already a couple of hours old, you will lose the data created since the backup. But assuming everything goes as planned and the two week development phase is over, we are now at the last part of our sprint, the sprint review and retrospective. In the review meeting, the dev team gathers up once again and discusses all the features implemented in the last sprint. We analyze the time needed and the difficulties we had and talk about any unusual events like sickness of a dev or something like that, which could have influenced the sprint goal. We then check our previously set sprint goals and see if we've reached them or not, and if we've achieved anything additionally. After that, we continue with the Scrum Retro, which is used to let every developer express their opinion about the sprint and answer three questions. What to start doing, what to stop doing, and what to keep doing. A quick example of these questions could be, start reviewing merge requests quicker so the story can be completed faster. Stop wasting too much time on a task if you're stuck and ask for help quicker. Keep having short and informative meetings to discuss open questions instead of planning an hour long meeting for a simple question. We usually write our personal answers to these questions down and discuss them in the team. 
The idea behind that is that we get a constant feedback of our work and can try to improve our workflow and efficiency with each sprint. And all of this cycle is repeated every two weeks. And this was actually a very realistic overview of what a typical day of mine looks like. And not like in all these other day in the life of a software engineer videos, which I've also made in the past, but in those it's actually sometimes really hard to show how stuff really works under the hood. Because usually people only film the nice and fancy polished stuff like their fancy offices and walking through them and the fancy food and all this kind of stuff, you know what I mean. There are a bunch of different development methods out there like trunk based development for example and web dev Cody did a pretty cool video on this one so check that out if you're interested. I'm not saying that the one that we use is the best but it's one that works pretty good for our needs. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys got any value from this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel out a lot and I would be really interested about your experience so please feel free to leave them down in the comments. And if you're still watching, leave a little computer emoji down in the comments so I know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.